Will Durant had said the Islamic conquest of India is one of the bloodiest stories of human history, not just Indian, but human history. But do our books talk commensurate about that? Historian K.S. Lal had mentioned that between 1000 CE and 1525, the population of the subcontinent fell by eight to nine crores. Eight to nine crores were actually massacred just in those 500 years of the early Delhi Sultanate uh, time and the early invasions of Islam. 60 lakh Jews being uh, you know, massacred during the Second World War, we call that as a Holocaust. So what do we call eight to nine crores of uh, Indians, Hindus, Buddhists, Jains who were all massacred during those 500 years? What do we call that? We do not call that the Holocaust. Uh, Sitaram Goelji uh, in his seminal work talks about 40,000 temples at the least. It's an underestimate. 40,000 temples uh, destroyed during the entire foreign invasion of India. Uh, where are these temples lost? Do we even talk? Forget reclaiming them. That's a long uh, story. One uh, temple which is of primal importance, we had to fight in the Supreme Court and uh, judiciary for hundreds of years. Uh, but all these temples, at least can we acknowledge that this is what happened? The you know, sex slavery that uh, the women of this country had to face during these invasions. Four lakh uh, plus women. There was a saying in Ghazni, uh, in Afghanistan, the Dukhtare Hindustan, Nilame Do Dinar. The daughters of Hindustan are auctioned here for two dinars each. So that was the, the there's a, there's a uh, tower there where people, the, the women folk from uh, Hindustan were taken away and auctioned for the sex trade uh, and slavery of the masses there. So where are all these stories and why do we not tell that? We have this fear that somehow talking about these will upset current social circumstances. It will make today's people, society uncomfortable or in some way communities today, particularly say the Indian Muslims are in some way responsible for the atrocities of Ghazni, Ghori, Aurangzeb, Tipu Sultan and all these tyrants, which is not true. I think the need is to dehyphenate today's people from these invasions of the past and also use history as a tool to ensure that these uh, you know, uh, atrocities are never repeated again. And these are not some medieval, uh, you know, tortures and things that happen. It's happening right now as we speak in our neighborhood, in our country uh, as well. Vivek ji has uh, spoken about the Kashmiri genocide. We've had what happened during partition. Uh, we've, we know what's happening in Bengal today, in Afghanistan, whether it's the destruction of the Bamiyan Buddhas and the, uh, the persecution of the minorities in our neighboring countries uh, and their steady dec decline of their population uh, you know, percentages. All this shows this is not some Delhi Sultanate that we're talking of. The Delhi Sultanate is very much alive. It is happening right around us. So this, uh, we need to all the more use history as the tool to dehyphenate today's Muslims saying you, they are not your heroes. If you really want people of your own faith as icons, there are enough. There is Ras Khan, there is Rahim, there is uh, Dara Shikho, there is Sant Shishunal Sharif, there is APJ Abdul Kalam. There are several people uh, who can be used as icons to make any group comfortable. You don't need to whitewash atrocities of the past. Mm -hmm.